everybody. Hi, I know it's been a long time since I've done a live, so forgive me for not showing more of life as we have moved to Switzerland, at least part of our life, and um, doing this talk today from our new house in Zug, and ciao! <laughs> and about to add my friend, oh, there we go, Monica over here. See if let's wait for her to connect real quick. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for joining this live today. Um, it's rather warm here, but I've heard it's a lot warmer in Italy right now. So I'm uh, just ciao, Lorenzo. Ciao. Just waiting for Monica to connect. It'll be a second. Uh, but I hope you guys are all having a good week so far. Um, we're surviving. It's been a lot of paperwork. German is little to, oh wait, she declined. Hold on. Go live with Monica. All right. Let's try this again, Monica. Come on. Add my, <laughs> add me. Um, hey, there you are. I was like, hey. oh, hi to me. Something was wrong. Oh my God. We've been off too long. <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to like play hard to get, we can do that. <laughs> no, the technology has abandoned me. It's too hot outside. We got thirty five degrees. Oh my god! Well, that's that. That's when you don't even want to go on a date because it's just like, don't touch me. It's too hot. Like, get away from me. <laughs> the date is with your cold shower. I get it. How are you? A busy. <laughs> yeah, I know. You are busy. Yeah, you look great. Zuri, you look really too. Yeah, this is You're I have my, my new furniture home because everything takes forever to be delivered during Ooh. the pandemic, of course. Uh, but you look very pretty too. I love those earrings. You look very yes. bright and summery. Yes, I'm on my. That's <laughs> only summer. I'm gonna get me here. <laughs> only the dresses. <laughs> no, you can, guys. If for anybody who's lived in Italy during a heat wave. You cannot wear pants, okay, when it's that hot. Because basically any kind of material that will stick less to your body. I mean, Monica, you know, you're even in the humidity land that is Veneto. So I've only, I've only dressed for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm very flattered because I know what, when you work from home, I know what it's like to have your home clothes versus your... I need to be presentable, even for yeah. Zoom call clothes. Yeah, Samara, Samara, I think, is like uh, the uh, house version of a bikini, but it's not bikini, of course. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't scare your sons, Monica. <laughs> they see you all. <laughs> hey, we're Italian, so we, we're not so prude. <laughs> I grew up with a Mexican mother, so I've seen my fair share of a lot of stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> but you look really good. So how Zurich then? I see how you. It has been okay. So for people that don't know, um, I will be living in both worlds of Florence, Italy, and here in Switzerland. We're near the city of Zurich, but we're in a smaller town called Zug. Uh, I hope I'm saying that correctly, but it means train in German. And it's really known for like being a kind of a tax haven. <laughs> so now, we know, now we know why Nico, why Nico took you there then. <laughs> yeah. Full disclosure, not because it's a tax haven, but because, <laughs> but because his new job is here in, in Bar is the name of uh, the place where he's working. But Zook is nice. It's really, really beautiful. I feel because it's only, it's been less than two weeks that I've been here. So I still feel like we're on vacation. Like, you know, walking around, I'm like, oh, let's go to the supermarket just so I can look at all the local products in Switzerland. And, you know, so I'm going to the lake every day, I'm going swimming. So it, it does have that vacation feel still, um, but I'm sure that'll change once, you know. <laughs> when you got your first bill? When the f you got the first bill? Oh, no, no, it's Monica. Switzerland is like the most efficient, from what I can see so far, it's the most efficient country I've ever been to ever, far surpasses even the US, um, but you gotta pay for it. So it's like the second you do something, bill. <laughs> so they go with that, bill. So Oops. it's like, you know, it's like, oh, okay. I didn't even have time to like. Yeah, I, I, I'm the, under the table doesn't even exist in this. No, but you know what though, I'm so okay with that. I mean, I've done that for 13 years and, um, 
I'm totally, I'm, I'm all about over the table. <laughs> <laughs> over the table, Monica. I gotta, we gotta support true Thanks. salaries and not have no. to supplement. I mean, if you want your society to change, that has to be part of it, so. <laughs> so how's Ginger doing with a, with a new environment? Does she like it? I would say that Ginger the Beagle, for people that know, we have a dog. Her name is Ginger. I wish she was here, but actually Nico's taking her for a walk. So you might see her a little bit later in the chat. Um, she is, I think this has happened for her because it's very dog friendly here. Everybody smiles. It's a great way to, you know, meet people and get to know people. By the way, chill, Megan. I just saw that one of my good friends is here. Um, yeah, so it's not only super dog friendly, but she's got so much more to look at. You know, there's animals everywhere there's ducks in the lake we might have got gotten chased by a swan the other day that wasn't such a great experience but okay <laughs> okay that was, that was my stupid persona that i thought oh let's look at the swan you know like, really? I'm such an idiot like obviously yeah, very aggressive i don't <laughs> know that we both me and ginger jumped like at least a meter to get away from the swan so yeah, and they can really so. hurt you as well because their beak is quite long and, and really hard it can really really hurt yeah it was really sly like if we were just kind of going near the water's edge and i was like ginger do you want to go in the water and suddenly the swan just kind of glides by and it didn't show any signs of aggression until we were kind of close to each other and then it lifted up and just you know i mean it was yeah. just very territorial <laughs> Very, very territorial. Above all, if, if they go with family around them. And you know, are very family oriented. There must be some Italian descendant or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I was very embarrassed. It was like, you know, there was this, all these families nearby. We're visiting. Oh, like, oh there she goes, American. Here she comes. Oh, no. <laughs> I am the queen of making an ass of myself in so many different ways. And it's just right that I would come to another country and make an ass of myself here, too. So, <laughs> yeah. listen, I was thinking you okay, you were amazing because you learned Italian, you struggled a little bit with French, and now you're starting all over again with German. Yeah, so good. Great to meet you. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a sadist and masochist, if you know me well, you know, I like pain and suffering especially when it's to myself. And so I mean, I'm saying this because I have all the respect in the world for people that speak multiple languages. For me, that's one of the best traits anyone could have, you know, the ability to communicate in a lot of, a lot of different languages. It, it, it does so many things for you in so many different levels. I just never thought I would be that person because I'm not particularly good at that. And it's, I struggle with it a lot more than my husband does, for example. So he's already deep into the German right now. And I have like my few words and just kind of like smile and go, forgive me, <laughs> please don't hurt me. But you know, the Swiss, Swiss are non-confrontational. So that nobody's gonna give me a hard time over it here. Oh, well, listen, you got your phone, Google Translate, <laughs> here you go. Little hack here. I had no idea that Google Translate has an option where you can lift up your phone take a picture of it and it translates like signs and everything signs oh. menus just figure this out in 2020 so uh you know guys you know this is some of us you think i'm really really good at everything uh regarding nah. now? you know georgette i realize that we've been on the business too long now <laughs> we're, young, we're, we're old now <laughs> you're right you're right i i uh yeah no, this is a, I'm realizing that more every day, but I'm like, you know what? I don't need to do this on the phone. Like, come on. Yeah. Um, TikTok. TikTok. You gave up. I'm on TikTok. I am on TikTok, but I don't really know how to use it well. But I have to say that during lockdown, I grew a greater appreciation for it because it's really funny, you know, and it wasn't just young people doing, you know, the, da, 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 you know, blinding <laughs> dances. <laughs>
<laughs> it was amazing. Gives oh. people a window. I mean, any way we can connect with the younger generation in, in a way that is most comfortable for them, I think is a good thing. Oh yeah, of course. Um, but I'm not going to become adept in any of those like viral dances or anything. <laughs> okay, just see. No, a dog. No, a dog. No, it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, you should get you should do dog training and get Ginger to do dog dance. I know. Well, of course. I mean, that's my whole thing. Is like, if I'm not going to like, you know, promote any, my whole family. Okay, whatever. Let's leave them out of this. My internet obsession. But like the dog. I mean, she can't, she can't, like, file a report on me to the police that I'm using the internet. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not abusing the dog by, like, you know, invading her privacy by putting her on the internet so she can't complain yet. So, <laughs> you think that. To make sure that she gets, you know, gets to the point where she can pay for her own food, because it's expensive, so. Uh, but have you have you have you listen, know. listen, one last thing. Have you opened an account to Ginger in Switzerland? Good question. So, you know, Beagle and Florence, I'm a little bit lazy and I, I've reached my limit of how many Instagram accounts I can follow, to be honest with you. Like, I, I'm done. I already follow that, you know, a few different ones for work. So she's still going to be in Beagle and Florence, but in her bio, it says Switzerland too. So we're just going to have to, we're going to have to work it out like that. So. Yeah, Beagle uh -huh. and Florence. I can't, I can't temporarily, temporarily moved. <laughs> You. Got to say, definitely. Uh, it's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nico. He's always presentable. It's me and I'm sweaty, actually. It's hot here too, but I shouldn't He's complain. French. It's French. They look good with rugs. I know. I know. He's like, oh, I, I can't start my day unless I look like decent. I'm like, oh, I can. I start my day and look like slob. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you don't. <laughs> oh, man. So, Monica, oh. tell me how you are doing in Venice, and then we can go on to your project, which is amazing. I want everybody to know about it. But first of all, how is life in Venice right now? Next question. <laughs> uh, I know. You know what, though? I find it really confusing to know how it really is, because I have some friends who have visited and they've had positive experiences, so I only oh, see yeah. it in kind of like that tourist lens okay. at the okay. moment. But like, how is it really? Because you okay. know, I'll tell you both from a tourist and what is really like. Okay, exactly. from a point of view of a tourist, guys, this is a time to come because I never, ever in my entire life, and I'm over fifty one, uh, never ever seen it so quiet in summer. I we go as far as to say I never seen so quiet in winter. Okay, which, for a point of view of a tourist, it's amazing. You don't chew anywhere. You don't have to shove yourself around people. Uh, people are very, you know, because they need you. Because of course there are no people around. Everybody in the shops and everybody in the restaurants are extremely kind. <laughs> Because, you know, they're very nice. Uh, also because they got the time, of course, and everything. And the weather has been fantastic because uh, today is the first day when it's really, really hot and sticky. Yeah. But then it's been really beautiful and really cool in the evening. Cool. Some are cool, but uh, I think tonight will be the first night that I'm going to start with sleeping. But the other night, I even had a little bit of a blanket on me, just to tell I mean, you. that sounds like paradise, because you guys have to understand, it's not like everybody has air conditioning in Italy, right? Exactly. When you're going to bed, you're often, I mean, I would take a shower before bed, I would have like a cold towel on my neck, I would do like all the things you did, because it's hot, it's, it might even not be, of course it's not 35 degrees Celsius at night, but it's sticky, it's humid, it's, yeah. you know, all of that yeah. air from the day has kind of stagnated and just swirling around yeah. you, so. Yeah, and Venice particularly is one that usually suffers a lot of uh, high humidity, like 80% humidity sometimes, so you go at night, I mean, I just talked 
I literally open. I've been indoors all day because I had to write some articles and stuff. So I literally opened the door one second to go in the garden about an hour ago, and it was like, <laughs> 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 oh my god, oh, god. Go, go, close it back in. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. just because when it so, gets to the crazy heat wave, you end up becoming vampires. You close yeah. the shutters, you turn off your lights, and you're literally like in the dark. Yeah. And the, yeah. everybody pictures Italian summers as being like. We're all on the beach enjoying spring. Yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah, okay. Maybe get some money too, sure. But like, <laughs> 10 days, uh, that's it. Yeah, for so, Oh, the tourists, I've got to say, so far it's been, I think it's probably the best time for people to come. I know Americans cannot come, I, I totally get that. But for the Europeans, from British, Germans, French, Span well, Spanish, maybe, I'm not so sure they can come in yet because we've all the restrictions and stuff. But whoever, whichever, country we, whichever country we're allowed in. <laughs> and, well, I will say this, because I know I'm in Switzerland and the rules are a little bit different here, but... I've been reading commentary from friends and things and stuff. So, you know, of course, be respectful if you go and wear your masks where you're supposed to wear your mask, use yeah. your gel. Cause that's the thing. It's like, I get like, even in Switzerland, it's not required to wear the mask um, unless you're in public transportation. But like, you know, Nika and I will wear it when we go into shops or around a lot of people because of course it's common sense. Yeah. Well, in Italy, the mo in Italy at the moment, or at least in Venice at the moment, in Veneto, because uh, Ven uh, I'm not so sure if it still changes from region to region. Yeah, I think that's true. No, it is different everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so in the Veneto region at the moment, so particularly in Venice, it is compulsory to wear it on public transports. And every time you walk into a public closed uh, space, so shops, museum, churches, restaurants. Right. Only in a restaurant that you go with a mask. You're allowed to take it off while you're eating. Yeah. And then you have to put it back on. But many restaurants now are, are allowed to have uh, um, an outside eating area. So if you are outside, you're allowed not to have it anyway. So it's actually quite good in the sense. And then you get used to it, to be honest. Yeah, no, it's actually not a big... I mean, I don't even notice it anymore. When I hear all these people complaining on social media, I, I can't breathe. Like, yeah. I mean, unless you have, like, a medical condition. Like, we are all... We've all you do what you got to do and it's about coming together and being there for one yeah. another and helping pass or else it's going to last forever, ever, ever. Exactly. And another good thing in Italy, every single shop, every single place you walk in, you have to rinse your hand. You have to use a gel to clean your hands. They force you to put your gel in the hands before you go in. Exactly. And to be honest with you, you get used to that as well. And it's actually quite nice because when it's so hot to have a little bit of gel and stuff, yeah. it's actually good. So, Honest as well, I don't understand all this fuss in America about not wearing a mask. Uh, not only that, these are the same people that uh, will go and dress as crazy uh, in all fancy dresses and stuff with weird things on. But then when they had to put a little mask, they don't. Oh, gosh, it's so full oh, of... Yeah, that's a good point, actually. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, you're, you're willing to dress like all kinds of characters, but a mask offends you. Uh, you'll put a corset head on your head and go to Walmart, but you can't put the mask on. <laughs> no, it's, it's crazy. Girl, anyway, so that's, 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 that's for the tourists in like Now, the reality for Venice right now instead is I think uh, we need to be honest. Uh, uh, things are not going well, as in... Uh, we need the tourists back. We don't need the masses back as before, but we do need tourists back because unfortunately what's happening, uh, the museums are not open. Well, they're open in, nobody has understood yet how, because one opens two days, another one two days, and then they close. Okay, we're not so sure. But the restaurants and the hotel, well, some of the hotels and mm, most of the um, uh, shops have opened again. But of course, they are all working at a loss, the majority of course. No, no. There are some good uh, examples of good pe people that are making a lot of money. But they know that is only for this period. Come October, I think we'll go back to a very serious thing. Just to give you an example how bad the situation is, today I was writing an article for tonight, and I had to uh, write down about places to go in the Castello area and restaurants. And of course, I went and put some, and then I went to, when I went to check for the address to put the correct, the correct address, all of a sudden Google was telling me closed permanently, not temporarily closed, closed permanently. 
it means, and that didn't happen once, it happened with three places. That's serious stuff, because we're not saying that they're closed just until things get better. These people are shut down. They're gone bust. They're gone. And that's very sad. And it wasn't even, as some people will say to me, oh, well, maybe they were a touristic restaurant. No, it was actually a small little shop, that open, restaurants that open and little takeaways and stuff that opened only about a couple of years ago. And they were really, really nice places where most of the locals went. But of course, you know, uh, the locals now, we're all broke because we all work in tourism. Oh, so the economic money. part of that too is the fact that like, you might assume, like, of course, everybody wants all of the super touristy 10 euro gelato places to close and everything like that. But guess who has probably the most money to weather it? Probably them. You know, it's maybe the smaller family owned businesses that are suffering the most because if you are even relying on a local clientele, and I know in Florence, I've seen that too, where, you know, people are going to support, but like people can't go out to eat every day and it's expensive. It's and you're just, everybody's trying to save some money, especially when they've been forced to take a uh, vacation during their lockdown because they had to take exactly. vacation furlough days. So. And another bad thing that is happening at the moment is uh, we had an insurgence of Italian visiting Venice. Yeah. Good, fantastic. It was beautiful. The first couple of weeks, it went crazy. Yeah. The problem is well, that the keep coming. But because they got no money, uh, they're not investing in Venice. So they come and pick me. Now, my point is, uh, like uh, your city needs money, so does Venice. So come maybe do something about it. Right? This is mainly for people that live uh, locally. Because uh, to be honest with you, Italians are... In uh, they are investees. Mainly we have the people from the Venice region that come for the day and they do exactly what the tourists used to do before them and they were the one telling the tourists off and we're saying, oh, oh right. yeah. Well, you know what? But this is the thing about human beings, right? We're all hypocrites. We complain about what other people do and then we do it ourselves and we, you know, I mean, it, it's normal human behavior to be like, oh, God, I know I should do all of these other neighborhoods, but I really want to do this, the main attraction. Exactly. I guess it's human nature. So, you know, uh, but I've got to say, I mean, the spirit is up and down. You know, it depends who you talk to. There are too many restaurants in Venice. We know that. Uh, <laughs> there are good uh, uh, good examples, though, of people that decided to open in the middle of lockdown instead of closing down. So I'm actually quite happy because there's people that uh, took the courage to do that and open in something, you know, some nice places. That's really ambitious too, considering. Uh, yeah, but it's working because, you know, if you offer something that is good quality and different, you know, the market, I think, is there. You know, the point is, if you went to open another ticketed place, of course not, because we got way too many now. And that was... Yeah, no, no, always, exactly. I mean, yeah, I always said that was a problem. I, I said to you everybody... You can't afford to suck anymore. You actually have to pick it up. Can, can you share, like, a, an example of a place that's open right now in Venice? Uh, of what? Of, like, a restaurant or a place that, or a shop that's been open, that opened during this period? Like, oh, right. Like okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, there's, um, there's this place that is called... Uh, uh, Santa Sofia 4190, Santa Sofia 4190, is actually right by Campo Santa Sofia in Strada Nova. So from the uh, Rialto market, you take the traghetto, you know, the gondola ride, you cross over, and they're there. They actually took over from a horrible place that used to be a cheap, cheap shop, bleh, disgusting, literally three doors from McDonald's, but they opened this Piadina place. But what's interesting is that Pladina is not Venetian, of course, it's from Emilia Romagna. But the person, Carlo, uh, the owner that decided to open, uh, he's involved also in another restaurant in Burano, so uh, he, he, he uh, always strives for high quality, slow food and this kind of thing. And um, he wanted to open a proper Pladina place, not, uh, you know, just... So yeah. everything is made on site from the door, they prepare it there on the spot for you. Okay, the door of ingredients, very high quality ingredients. And I got to say, when they first started the Venetians, were a big, mm, okay, now yeah, they're uh, Yeah, 
And then he said, you should start going. And we realized that he's, uh, he's really good. He's offering both a traditional version and also a vegetarian one. And the quality is really high and the prices are quite in line anyway. So all of a sudden, it's not every, you know, the tourists are not that many, but it's got a lot of um, locals going. So that's good. And somebody as well that's thriving, I was speaking today, is like Como. Do you remember I introduced you to them uh, when we passed uh, uh, the lady from Texas? Oh, yeah, yeah. of course. You know, well, yeah. yeah, so I, I remember oh. I did a live with them uh, about a couple of days before they were allowed to open for the lockdown, and they were pretty desperate. They didn't really know what was going on. And I spoke to her yesterday, and she was like, we can't cope with the work. We got so much work. Because, of course, at the moment, high people uh, that come over, they're not the big groups. They are not mass tourists. It's quality tourists. Uh, we have a lot of people from Switzerland. We have a lot of people from Austria. We have people from other parts from Italy, but not necessarily Italians only. Also expats that like to, um, you know, eat properly. You know? Yeah, not I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if you're going to go to Venice, I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of the touristy places are really expensive. So why not pay a little bit more, support a local place that actually sources quality ingredients, and you're going to actually you're gonna have a better experience because it's not like the cheap places are that cheap. I mean, they're not. Exactly. So you, if you go to do it, do it properly and do it, and you come out with an experience and a half, you know, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, that's the situation. Things are tougher very tough at the moment but venetians are resilient and that's what i love about them so you know it's uh you know and uh, and that's why uh, the project that i'm going to tell you about uh, came about uh i don't know yeah we we, we we talk about this also during our lives in the past and stuff yeah. so we had this uh, dream and it was literally a dream because I still remember I went to bed after I uh, did a live with uh, Romena, the girl that I'm doing, Romena Brugnerotto, I'm in Venice, that I'm, she's involved in the project as well. And I remember we did a live uh, on Facebook where we were complaining about the videos that were yeah. circulating. Remember, we talked about that as well. It's, you know, Venice is dying, all the drones, empty Venice and stuff. So I went to bed with this in my mind and at three o'clock in the morning I woke up because I had a dream. And I dreamt it. I was making a film about Venice with a proper story and everything. And I thought, mm, okay, so I had to wait until nine o'clock in the morning to call her. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't happy because it was a Sunday morning. Uh, You're okay. that person, Monica. You're that yeah. person to call on a Sunday morning. <laughs> yes, with a dream. Just, just yeah. a Sunday morning, really, yeah. So she actually answered the phone. I told her the story and funny enough, she started crying on me. I wish yeah, it's not very, you know, she, she's not one like a, with a tears in, you know, straight away. So I thought, oh, God, she got emotional. But I thought, okay, might be lockdown blues and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's emotional now. So. Yeah, so I pulled up another couple of friends and I got the same kind of response. I thought, mm, okay, maybe it's not such a bad idea. So I call a friend of mine that is a film director in Los Angeles. Because I thought, okay, I got this idea, but maybe it's a very potty idea. So I called him and I said, look, be brutal. Is it doable? And is it a good idea? Because, you know, maybe my story is, you know, just... Yeah. And he said, oh, my God, go for it. I said, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you the name of a director that can help you. Turns out I already worked with this uh, young guy. He's a Venetian uh, during Carnival. He... Kind of like the idea straight away. He said he was he had been wanting to do something along the line for a while, and we met. We eat it off. We got involved. Uh, a very famous director of photography that when I told him, I first looked at me, silence for about a minute or so, at which I thought, okay, yeah, it's a bit awkward when somebody's just like, mm, okay, <laughs> and then he said to me, well, yeah. But to do what you want to do, this is a professional thing. That's not a video with a mobile phone, he said. We're talking about loads of money. And all I could hear in my head was, uh, can be done, can be done, can be done. <laughs> well, that's good. That's a good attitude to have, considering, you know. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, right now everybody's thinking about money. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I said to him, okay, don't worry. You tell me how much money it costs uh, and I get, I'll try to get the money. And that's how it all started. That's how Anima Veneziana was born. It was very hard to find the title. You know, I spent about a week every night thinking, what am I going to call it? What am I going to call it? And then we came up with this uh, Venetian soul, you know, because at the end, it's going to be a video. And I'm not going to say what if, but when, okay? It's going to be a video about Venice and the Venetian. It's going to be a video that shows Venice the way the people that live Venice, not live in Venice, live Venice, experience it every day. Uh, you know, from uh, your old people walking on the road to the young children, to the people that work, so the different categories. Um, it's not going to be a um, publicity video for that or that person. It's a promotional video for Venice to show the people that they should come to the city and stay more than two days. And this is the time to do it. I love that idea. I think that's amazing, Monica. And I really commend you for even attempting to do something like this during such a difficult time. And you know what? I do think people need to see that. We have been, you know, we've been, we've been embracing, in a way, doom and gloom for the past seven months or so. Oh, my God. Which, has been, which is, in a way, needed to happen because for people to take the virus seriously, and as you can see, some people still don't take it seriously. Oh, my God. Um, even despite seeing in front of your <laughs> butch <Bocelli. laughs> You know. I, I, I thought you were talking about Trump. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not going on right over here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you need to see that. But at the same time, I do think that we need to listen to people who are living in Venice every single day. And, I mean, it's just so interesting how people who are outsiders or not there every day have a totally different perception sometimes than people who are living there. So it's important to see what you see and experience things. That you, and, and, you know, a lot of people might not be able to come to Italy for a while, but at least they can get a glimpse of what they could be doing when they're there, you know, and people travel virtually uh, through videos yeah. and through museum visits and all those kinds of stuff. So I think it would be a great promotion for Venice. And I, I mean, I wish the city of Venice would be, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I think you know what uh, actually was very uh, good uh, sorry because I got somebody trying to call me um, what was very good uh, also that when I start telling people about what I wanted to do because I wanted to, to do totally in Venice by the Venetians so they're not going to be um, what can I say they're not going to be actors if they are they are Venetian actors that obviously uh, are going to help us out uh, it's because it's a non-profit uh, uh, a political project okay uh, what was very nice that uh, uh, shocked me a little bit I got to say because, uh, uh, some friends said to me oh who's going to help you doing this it was amazing that no matter who I was asking everybody was like oh my god we love to be part of this so how about offering their location offering their time offering products because uh, obviously we started a crowdfunding to try to get the money because it's a lot of money. We need 50,000 euros to do because it's a proper film, I repeat. So I can give you a business plan if you, if you want to know. Yeah, yeah if anybody goes. wants, and you know, after, after this live on stories, I will include a link to the articles and, and donation okay. links if you would like to donate to this project and read more about it. But yeah. this is why we're talking about it today because it's one thing to hear about it or read about it, but we're all absorbing so much information, Monica. You know, people yeah. need to hear about you know, why do something like this? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why does it matter, you know? Yeah. So obviously, uh, you know, if, for people that are not involved in the film industry, okay, people that are involved in films or this kind of business, they said to me, are you going to do it with 50,000? That's nothing. When he said, obviously, people that are not in the business go, 50,000? What are you going to do with yeah, it? Yeah, it's like the opposite. It depends who you talk to. You talk to somebody. Well, I mean, it's not like you're asking brad pitt to come here and be like the lead actor you know i mean you're not but, you know but by the time you hire to fight because it's gonna be five days filming by the time you hire boats because in venice you got to go around with boats by the time you hire all the equipment uh i got to pay of course uh, it's no profit that doesn't mean it's a free video yeah, uh, totally. you have to keep uh, to pay for the equipment and for the people filming of course but, uh, you know, the money escalates. Uh, you know, you have to pay for the people to run the crowdfunding as well because people think, oh, you just collect the money. No, it's got to be done properly. So you have yeah. to have a company. We have an association. Well, that, I think, is something that really has to be underlined because we've all seen crowdfunding projects across the web and people who have really good 
uh, reasons for doing it. And, but if it's not managed well, and I think that happens a lot. I've seen a lot of really famous campaigns where they're like, oh my God, I have all this money, what do I do? Oh shit. Yeah. And I realize that there's, you know, all these legal implications. So it is something that has to be taken seriously. And Absolutely. I was happy to read that. Well, I, that's like the first thing I try to verify when I decide. Okay. So when I started this, I was trying to explain also the other day to uh, when I got to interview by Forbes, the people uh, explain this. I am a dreamer, but my feet are very put on the ground. As in, my dreams are big, but I'm also, I'm also smart enough to understand that uh, one dreams you can turn into reality but you have to have a plan and i'm not a filmmaker okay uh, i've got this idea in my head but i immediately realized that i needed professionals to help me do this and i needed professionals to help me do the crowdfunding because i wanted this to be totally transparent i want mainly for the italians because you know, in italy there's so much money disappearing where it's not supposed to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want anybody to be able to attack me for that. Okay, uh, this is going to be a totally transparent. So if any time people want to ask me where the money is, I can tell them. Exactly. Well, well I mean, if, if, if Monica pops up here with a, a villa in Veneto, we'll know. <laughs> She's gonna be like, family. I have fifty thousand. Ten euros. Fifty thousand, sweetie. I don't even oh, buy. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Fifty thousand yeah. will buy you a car. A fourth of a garage. A car. A car with a nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not even a boat. You're right. So, um, I just, you know, we, um, we, we decided here to be done properly because also we want this, uh, we will going to produce in two versions. One's going to be free for everybody to use on YouTube and it's going to be a video and anybody, two reporters, uh, shots. Oh, this is super good to know because people were asking me, at least on Facebook, if they're in, you know, Australia or somewhere else, if they're going to be able to watch the video. It's going to be free once it's done. Well, obviously, it's going to take a while because we got to collect the money, we got to film, and then post-production. So do I expect it to be at least three to four months, okay? It's not going to be done straight away. Uh, but yes, it's going to be one shorter version live uh, online for everybody to see because that was the point of promoting Venice. And a longer version, because of course in five days filming, you do collect a lot of material. We want to do a proper documentary to present and at different film festivals all over the world. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, because I repeat, this is not a video done with your phone. Because a lot of people said to me, oh, we thought you were going to do an artisan video, you know, like, uh, no. Uh, if I want, that's the reason why uh, me and Romana wanted to do this, to get away from those sort of videos. We have enough of those drone videos or videos with the phone that don't really Mm, they're very a common aesthetic, you know, uh, detached. Yeah. Venice is made by its people, okay? The buildings are there, but somebody built them. Somebody looks after them. Who are these people? The Venetians. And they need to be uh, recognized for that, uh, above all, all the artisans and all the, you know, the glass masters, the lace ladies. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the People that sing, the people in the arts, the dance, everybody. So all the people that make better because that's the thing. It's like I always think about this. You know, we always talk about helping and say. I mean, the thing, the good thing is, is there's always a lot of awareness when it comes to like helping out Italian artisans and things like that. But it's really hard, even despite the awareness, it's still really hard for these businesses to survive. And and part of it is, you know, red tape in Italy and the bureaucracy. Ooh. I mean, it's it's a killer. And I really hope, my hope for Italy is that that changes and, and, and we're able, and, and people can do things a little bit easier in the future. But it's also one of those things where, you know, you want people, Venetians to feel like they can stay in Venice. Because yes. you know, there's that, the exodus has been ongoing and, and I just feel exactly. like we need to show people why it's worth staying there and if, if it's possible. And, and so they can live like a decent life because a decent life is, to me, living with decency is giving people, I mean, you know, I complained about the prices here in Switzerland, but that 20, you know, franc takeout, Indian takeout for one thing, which is crazy expensive. I mean, everything's expensive. But it's giving somebody a proper wage so they can afford the place where yeah. they live and things like that. So there's a bit of, you know, I would like to see that more in Venice so that, that when cri if a crisis like this happens in the future, and I hope it never does, uh, people are able to sustain themselves. 
Yeah. And they, you know, and be attracted to other Italians because that's the thing. It's now we're relying on European tourism and Italian tourism and it's not the same. So um, I, I think that this video will highlight that and will show people why, you know, I'll also give people something they're not getting a lot of right now because, you know, the news is so negative and polarizing yes. to have something non-political and just beautiful and, and showcasing and something made with people who know Venetians and are, are Venetian themselves, that's so rare. Because usually it's an outsider coming in to kind of take a parody of what Italians are like, right? Yes. So yes. It's, it's, uh, you know, the opposite. And another thing that uh, I want to point out is it's not going to be, be a video about the iconic monuments. So don't expect to see some Mars Square, maybe, but probably not. Don't expect to see Rialto, probably not. Um, you're going to see uh, buildings, interiors of buildings that you do you will not even know where they are because uh, um it's a big, we have been given the permission permission by various associations and it was so nice of them to do in fact uh, when the video will be published in the titles that's what i loved about this uh, when i approached private people about this and i told them clearly your name will not appear on the video okay People will not understand who you are because it's about Venice, not about promoting this and that person. They just look at me and said, fine, but we're doing something for Venice. Uh, wow, so that's amazing, though. That was normally, those interactions are always like, and hey, mention my brand. Or do what do I do? Exactly. No, they were just so happy to be part of this. So what we decided to do, because it's a non-profit project, in the video, the names of who will appear will be the associations because so many of them gave us location. We have Scala Contarini del Bobolo, Ateneo Veneto, the villas uh, on the villa area on the Giudecca, and the Association of the Masks, uh, the uh, Committee for the Venetian Beads, uh, Laguna Nel Bicchiere, the promote uh, vineyards in Venice. You know, they're all associations. They, they have all the publicity as possible. The others are not. But we kind of felt we had to give them something back because, you know, some of them are giving us a lot. So what we do is uh, if, if when people go on the website, we see that we're talking about these people. So we are giving them a voice. As in, I've asked them for three questions. They had to answer them. And so you know that these are the people of Venice that are helping us. But there are a lot behind that you don't know. Uh, but... You know, they decide, no, that's fine. We are okay. We just, you can to film and everything. So it would be, we're going to go to glass masters. We're going to go to bead makers. We're going to go to the late uh, people, fishermen, uh, singers, uh, you name it. Uh, we do um, it. Can, I can, if you need like an intern or something, I can pretend go to be first. Go go first. and just be like your runner, you know, and be like, cosa vuoi? Un altro spritz? Yeah, she? Okay. <laughs> Now, it's very nice because actually it's not, it's not, it is more of a film rather than a video because it is a story that I cannot say because unfortunately, I'm going to leave something for suspense. To be uh, no, I can't. No, because it was, no, I can't. Sorry, because I know <laughs> Venice, unfortunately, is a city of merchants. And what do merchants do? They copy each other. So <laughs> I can't, I'm sorry. That's true. Is blind. Is still, you know, totally, totally closed in uh, the, the the project. Anyway, but uh, all I can say is uh, we don't need big amounts. Even just ten euros will do it. Uh, we try to do that. You can uh, donate in every possible way. You can donate with PayPal. You can donate on Facebook. You can donate by wire transfer, bank transfer. Where you just anything, even just ten euros will be enough uh, because we work it out if. We just have, let's say, now less than 5,000 because we're already on 2,000 at the moment. Uh, uh, we already picked them, maybe 2,000 euros. So less than 5,000 people. That is not a lot of people spread all over the world. Seriously, that's true. That's a good point. I always think that if it's only five or ten dollars yes. or euros, that's it's, yeah. not, it's not a huge, big amount and you can be help, helping support this project. So when did you guys launch the fundraiser? We, la we launched it on the 15th of July and it closes on the 15th of September. But okay. what we're going to do, because of course uh, it will be, be stupid to give the money back if we don't reach the target by then. If we don't, but we got to. 
But if we don't, what we do is we carry on collecting until we reach a target because we decided uh, things are going too smoothly and so many people said yes to this project. But to be honest with you, to leave it like this, it will be very stupid. Uh, this is a moment to do something like that. And to, uh, in my head, I know we will do it. I, the vibes are way too positive. Everything went, uh, you know, like when you start, uh, uh, how do you say in Granaggio in English? I can't remember. Uh, the wheel. Okay. Oh, yeah, like it's every, everything started and it started to move quickly and started to work, uh, synergize quickly yeah. in the beginning. And, uh, you know, every time I speak to somebody, they go like, oh, you should speak to this person because this person can do this. And it's like, okay, okay. It's uh, an incredible. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and so if anybody can donate, and if you cannot donate, just spread the word because somewhere out there will want to donate. And uh, let's hope uh, we'll be able to do it. Well, that's, and I think that's the important thing too. It's like, you know, I know there's a lot of associations right now that are asking for donations and help and everything like that. And all of us are fully aware of that. So um, you have to choose what works for you as far as what you want to support. And that's why we're talking about this because I thought, okay, if we had the chance to just chat, like we always do, we always have a lot of fun, Monica and I, it doesn't matter where we are. Yeah. Um, and, not, and, not, and not just uh, on Instagram, even with proper drinks. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, you know, social media and everything like that. Like. You know, I like the social aspect more than the technology aspect, you know? Otherwise, I'm going to be like that weirdo that's just in her, you know, behind her computer and doesn't talk to anybody except her husband and dog. And I already talk to the dog way too much. Like, Wait, you know? by the way, by the way, you already booked for the premiere. I'm already what? You booked for the premiere. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm already, I've already picked my dress. Do I get to put on a nice dress? Of course, yeah. I think my I already decided what I'm gonna wear. The moment of the film director in Los Angeles told me it was a good idea. I already planned what I'm gonna wear. I mean, you know what? Considering that none of us have that many reasons to get dressed up ever, especially this year, something stupid a little like that really kind of matters. So it's good for the morale. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not, it's not stupid, it's good, it's good. Yeah, 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 no, right. I mean, in my so head, I, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but in my head, I would like to do the premiere. Obviously, uh, with the COVID regulation, probably will be only a certain number of people, but to do it live online at the same time as we're launching through Instagram and Facebook, because of course what's happening, uh, we have the um, Cine Club of Venice that is going to help us support us as well. And there's a lot of young people there, so I'm going to get them involved. So it would be very, you know, to do like the proper, a proper film, you know, like a proper oh. film. I, and I mean, no, I mean, the fact that so many people were willing to not only support the project, but actually connect you with other people and give their spaces and provide help or, pro you know, products and things like that. That says that, that says that people believe in this, you know, and yeah. that's I mean that's really nice to hear. We need to hear more of that in general. So one thing, <laughs> I only gave one uh, rule book to the film. I need to be in one scene. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> be like Monica, be like. <laughs> no, 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 proper one, but just one. I said for the rest, I don't care. But hey. Listen, I'm working for free. I've been working for free nonstop since the 15th of July. I think I deserve I know, it. Mom, a bit of a, you know, cameo. <laughs> and, and if you don't mind me asking you, you know, a personal question, but like, have you been able to resume any of your work, your normal paid work? Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, I've actually got to tomorrow. I did about three or four. Yeah. We Germans, I did. Germans and Austrians, I've never done that. I know. So, yeah, uh, compared to a lot of people that are not working, I've got to say, I, I'm not working as I usually do, but I've done something, okay. I even did the dinner. But, uh, you know, we worked, yeah, we're not doing cooking classes at the moment. We, we, we cannot do it. Safety regulations. Yeah. We, no, I get it. But the dinners we can because we go with the gloves, we go with a mask, we got gel everywhere, and uh, you know <laughs> we, we close uh, we close the door. We did allow the guesting in the kitchen until it was time to to dish out, so it's okay. 
Uh, and the tours are okay. They're small tours, but I always do small tours anyway. So actually, I enjoy them again because last year I got to a point where I wasn't didn't like them so much anymore. Not for the, the people coming because of the crowds. Now because there's nobody around, it's like being back to five yeah. six years ago. So it's actually nice. You no, know, I hear that. I hear that from a lot of my friends that are tour guides, even in Florence. Like I don't think I have to say a lot of my tour guide friends. Obviously, they're devastated. I mean, their work has been devastated. Obviously. However, none of them are really, you know, even though it affects them personally in the pocketbook, want things to go back to how it was before. So it says to me that there is this want and need for change in general. And I mean, you've always promoted promoted uh, small group um, and doing curated off the beaten path kind of things. As, as cliche as those words are, they mean something in that regard because you know Venice is full of all these secret places. That I mean, every single time I go there, I discover something new. And I've been you know, living in Italy for so long. So there's so much to discover and, you know, by staying longer, I mean, Nico, for example, spending the night there in February or spending a weekend there, um, which isn't even enough time. We both said, oh my God, we need to come and stay for like two weeks. It was such, I mean, he is in love now. He's like, you know. Well, he's in love with me, woman, not with Venice. <laughs> I mean, oh, poor, I don't want to say it, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just came back right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nico, we were just talking about you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I keep asking. Like I keep asking. Nice to <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, I think we better wrap this up because I okay. have some groceries. Thank but. you so much uh, for listening to my jabbering and stuff. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, so it's so nice to talk to you, Monica, and see you. You look gorgeous. And I really hope that this project reaches its goal sooner than later. So, so guys, who, check out my stories after. I'll include the link to where you can read up on the project and donate if you can or yeah. share the word. Yeah, so, animaveneziana.com. Ciao, Sara. Ciao. 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 Ciao.